Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. Thanks for joining me on the live Q&A every Friday, now 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live from Michigan. So let's jump in. Wow, that was cool. That was a flawless opening and no one is here yet. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Uh, so I got a lot of stuff I want to do today as far as like moving crypto around and doing some demo and stuff for you guys. So I'll kind of jump into that as soon as possible. But I did kind of want to talk a little bit about the news, stuff that's going on. A lot of interesting things happening in the crypto world. So uh, let's uh, switch over here to our uh, browser. All right. And so the title of the live stream was is um, Binance Goes Mainstream. So Binance was in the news pretty heavy yesterday. Uh, in fact, uh, their... Uh, the price of the BNB coin took a spike yesterday on the announcement of some of these things. So uh, I thought I'd uh, go over that. So let's see here. Binance. Yeah, I think. Well, this was one that was uh, pretty interesting. And it just goes to show you uh, what kind of a uh, powerhouse business Binance is becoming. Uh, if you're not aware, Binance is the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, uh, based in Malta. It was originally based in China, uh, I believe moved to Hong Kong, and then to Malta. And, uh, and it's been going strong ever since. So uh, it makes a lot of money uh, because people are trading crypto and they're charging uh, trading fees uh, and uh, moving fees, uh, transfer fees, that sort of thing. So uh, they, and, you know, they hold a lot of crypto of, in and of themselves. So anyway, uh, they are constantly innovating and expanding and uh, trying to build up their business and expand in different areas. So, uh, you know, when they first started, it was just a cryptocurrency exchange. And, uh, of course, now... It's evolved to, uh, you know, a coin that has its own blockchain. Um, so there's Binance coin. They have the decentralized exchange. So this story here is uh, now they've got, uh, you know, a war chest that they can use to uh, invest in other companies, uh, startups, things like that. So uh, they're, uh, they just made a $5.7 million uh, donation or investment in uh, the FIO protocol. So uh, the FIO protocol is the foundational foundation of interwallet oper operability. Lilla, that's a mouthful. A Denver-based blockchain usability firm uh, named uh, Dapix or Dapix. So uh, as all of you guys know that follow this channel, uh, dealing with cryptocurrencies is a little bit hard, right? Cryptic, a little hard to wrap your mind around. It would be so much easier if sending and receive cryptocurrency was more like email, uh, you know, or uh, Facebook chat or whatever. So this uh, inter-wallet operability foundation is focusing on uh, adding user-friendly controls uh, to cryptocurrencies and blockchain, that sort of thing. So uh, this is pretty cool. So I thought that was interesting that uh, Binance is investing in this. It's not a direct like investment in like something that they think is going to make a lot of money. It's more of a an investment in pure technology, which uh, you know shows that Binance is pretty far sighted. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then the next big news that came out yesterday uh, for Binance uh, was. Uh, Binance launches, and this was the big one, uh, launches dollar-based crypto stablecoin with New York, uh, what do we got? The New York Department of Financial Services blessing. So, uh, and that's not easy to come by. Uh, there are a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges that are blocked in the state of New York because of their tough regulations. So, uh, this is quite a coup. For Binance to be able to uh, announce this stablecoin 
uh, with the New York, the state of New York's blessing, right? Uh, the, the New York Department of Financial Services. Big stuff, really, really big. Uh, and so this new stable coin is going to be dollar backed and, uh, you know, it's regulated so that every Binance USD stable coin will be backed one to one with the U.S. dollar. So pretty cool. And then also the company that they're partnering with, PAX, also announced a gold backed cryptocurrency yesterday, PAX Gold. Uh, so that's kind of a new wrinkle in the whole cryptocurrency thing going on with a gold-based cryptocurrency. Um, so uh, I don't have that article up at the moment, but uh, that's another interesting development in cryptocurrency. And uh, let's see, there was one more thing about <laughs> Binance. Uh, a campaign, a fundraising campaign for victims of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, not only are they uh, trying to help other people, uh, you know, which is uh, a lot of companies do that. I mean, uh, we're all human beings. Um, but uh, they're using uh, the power of blockchain-based cryptocurrencies to do that. And in a way, demonstrating to the world uh, how quickly funds can be accumulated and applied where they are most needed uh, quickly using blockchain. Um, you know, I'm assuming most uh, normal uh, foundations or charity organizations, there's a whole process where they have to get, people have to donate through their bank or however they send the money and then the money has to be processed and through a centralized uh, system and then distributed and you know there's a lot of overhead and and there's a lot of delays so uh, Binance is using the power of the blockchain to make a difference and demonstrate to the world how efficient uh, and quick uh, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency can be when uh, put to good use right and then this is also kind of trying to polish up the image of cryptocurrency which is always had kind of a bad rap uh, by the, you know, the, the mainstream uh, people because it's always been painted as this, uh, you know, criminal underground money used for drugs and child and uh, human trafficking and, you know, and all this. Uh, so uh, there are so many good things that you can do with cryptocurrency. So I, I really enjoyed this. Okay. So I want to just say hello to everybody that popped in agent orange uh, <laughs> uh, Moses hello thanks for being here uh, cop Tenko Miguel hey Scott Lee here right on time Wow uh, thanks for being here Scott uh, what do you think is the best alternative for Binance uh, for US traders Tia well, I would say Binance US. Uh, they're starting a new cryptocurrency exchange uh, based in the US, backed by Binance, that's going to uh, offer what? Do you know where's mommy? Uh, she's probably upstairs, my little friend. Uh, so, uh, you know, Binance is not going away. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last week. Binance is closing off access to their main cryptocurrency exchange to US customers. They're not they're only uh, they're owing only blocking deposits and trades. You can still withdraw any holdings that you have. So you're not going to be cut off completely from Binance. So there's no reason to panic. Um, uh, unless you've got some cryptocurrencies on there that uh, you really don't have anywhere to put, right? That that aren't going to be supported in the US. You might as well liquidate them or figure out some kind of wallet that you're going to store them in uh, because uh, you'll still be able to withdraw them, uh, but they're not going to do you much good uh, if you can't trade them, right? So uh, so uh, that would be my... Uh, but then, of course, there's always Bittrex and Coinbase. Uh, Gemini is another good uh, approved exchange in the U.S., right? Uh, Pat, hi. Nice to see you. Uh, Mr. David is here. Wheel of Fortune just ended. Uh, 
Uh, Chadwick is here. Hello. Uh, Moses, Timmons, Whittle in Vermont. Uh, Rick and thoughts on the MCO card. Uh, Bitrex. Uh, Linda. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Linda. Uh, so, uh, let me finish up a little bit with the news. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the MCO card, which I, uh, honey, could you do me a favor, sweetie? Could you get my wallet? The wallet? Yeah, it's upstairs on that tray. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys the card. Uh, so, uh, but the, kind of the, the bad pale Paul over our discussion tonight is, uh, that Bitcoin looked like it was going to, uh, take off today. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then, oh God, the powers that be decided to say some, talk some smack about Bitcoin again. Uh, but he didn't really, he didn't really bash Bitcoin. He just sort of kind of dampened people's hopes. Uh, and I don't know who thought that the Federal Reserve was going to endorse crypto and welcome it in with open arms. But the fact that they had to, uh, you know, uh, you know, explicitly state that they were not planning on developing their own cryptocurrency, uh, sort of dashed i don't know who was hoping that the fed was gonna you know release their own cryptocurrency but they said something about cryptocurrency that wasn't as positive as people were hoping and bitcoin took a dive uh this is a pretty short little story here i think it's the the better one is on my phone uh oh god i lost it uh What in God's name did he say? He said something. He basically just said we're not planning on developing a cryptocurrency because there's some issues involved with cryptocurrency. Oh, that's right. You can't find it? No. Okay. All right. Okay, I found it. Sorry. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll move to that in a second. Uh, God, I can't, f you know, this always happens to me. Uh, actually, I think I emailed it to myself, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. There was a little more detail in that. Um, maybe not. No, I didn't. Uh, so anyway, the Fed said something and the Bitcoin took a dive. We don't really know if that was the, the, the reason why the Fed, uh, the uh, Bitcoin took a dive. It may have been this uh, large whale that, that consolidated a uh, billion dollars worth of Bitcoin today. Uh, it was a transfer of 94,000 BTC uh, from several wallets into one wallet. And, uh, but they don't know who owns either any of the wallets, right? Oh, oh, and the reason I wanted to bring up this thing right here, if you'll notice here, they give the address, which we could uh, check out on the Blockchain Explorer. So we can do that. Uh, yeah, Blockchain Explorer. Um, if it will pull up, there we go. Let's put that address in there. Okay, yeah, that's the one we want. Okay, well, so we can see it right here. It's a public blockchain, right? But we don't really know who owns these addresses, right? But the interesting thing that they mentioned was, uh, was it that? They said point one in the story. Um, I don't see point one. Anyway, uh, but basically what they did was a transaction worth uh, point 0.1 BTC had initially occur, occurred, presumed, presumably as a test transaction between the first wallet and the recipient. So uh, 
you know, uh, that's what I always tell uh, people in all my videos and whenever I'm working with someone and they're sending Bitcoin to a new address or any cryptocurrency, always do a small test transaction to make sure everything's working fine. You never know what could happen. Uh, and in this case, right, make sure it's going to, you know, the address is valid and everything's going to work before you transfer a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Right. So but they they did a test transaction. So which is best practice. That's what we always do here. We do we do a small test transaction unless I'm getting lazy and then I just like transfer it all. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Uh, so Binance uh, will have a separate company called Binance US that will open shortly. Um, but it may not coincide precisely with the Binance proper or binance.com closing access to deposits and trades in the US. Uh, they're trying to uh, they're they're trying to shield themselves from any regulatory issues with the United States uh, the IRS, the FTC, whoever, you know, the, the boogeymen. So, uh, you know, as you know, Binance has hundreds, thousands of coins on their platform, and not all of them are uh, regulatory, compl are compliant with U.S. regulations. And so uh, Binance decided, hey, we're just going to block access to U.S. IP addresses. Uh, anyone else in the world can still use Binance, but people in the, well, there's like uh, 10 other countries, too, that are kind of small. I don't want to belittle them, <laughs> They're not France and Germany or anything. There, there was just the U.S. mostly, and then a bunch of other little or smaller countries. They're blocking access to Binance, and then Binance will open a smaller cryptocurrency exchange in the U.S. that's based in the U.S., fully compliant, like Coinbase and Bittrex, and it'll only have about 30 cryptocurrencies. Right? So that's the, the transition thing that's going on with Binance. All right, so Bitcoin took, Bitcoin took a dive today. So, uh, and it looked like it was getting up there. You know, I was so, uh, it looked like, you know, it took a dive uh, last week and everybody was, you know, writing the epitaph of Bitcoin. And then over the last several days, it's just marched right back up to be uh, over 10 grand, right? It sh I think it went all the way down to like 93 or something like that. So I read this story earlier about, you know, these technical analysis saying that Bitcoin was just about ready to do that 2019, you know, all time high or whatever, you know, but it didn't pan out because the Fed chairman said something subtly that uh, spooked everybody. And so here we go. Here we are uh, with uh, Bitcoin at uh, 10,370, which is not bad, considering that it was hovering right around there uh, several days ago. And let's do a seven day chart, right? So yeah, let's see, September 2nd, when did it go all the way? Uh, let's do a month, yeah, let's do the last month. I guess that's the low, or this is the low, right? 95, which was a few days ago, uh, you know, and it had been up in, in that range, you know, the 2, 3, 10, 3, blah, 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 10, 3, and then uh, boom, it should, shoots down to 94.50, and then it just kind of climbs steadily back all the way up to where here and then today it makes a run at 11,000 and boom, it falls. <laughs> but still, uh, you can see that where it is today is much higher than it was over the last week or so, right? So uh, we should be thankful for what we've got. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So I want to move some crypto around. But before I get started, I would like to... Uh, show you some things on the oh oh someone asked me about the mco card uh this is the mco card uh, i'm going to disable this this is the mco visa card uh it's a metal card i don't know if you can 
<laughs> it's a metal card, and it looks really cool. It's got the logo on there, and you can use it for purchases anywhere. I've been using it. It works great. Um, it, uh, I set a pin for it, so every, every now and then it... Um, and the machine will ask me for my pin. Other times it won't. Uh, they'll want me to sign something, but it always works. It's never been declined, right? So if we go to crypto.com, we can uh, go over to that card down at the bottom, and you can see that I've got a U.S. dollar balance on there. I just used it a little while ago, and you can see that I've used it all over the place, and it's a real good way to spend your crypto. It doesn't do it directly, but here's the deal, right? Let's say, uh, like the other day, I was kind of like, well, you know what? Uh, I need a little, uh, you know, I want to spend a little extra money over the next few days, so I'll throw an extra 200 bucks on there, right? So you can see that on a Wednesday, I loaded it up with 200 bucks, and then I just used the card to spend. Now, it's a one-way deal, right? Once you sell the crypto that you've got in your account, it goes, it turns into cash. It won't go back uh, from the card, right? Once it's on the card, you just have to spend it on the card. But uh, so you can top it up using uh, Bitcoin that you own or from the fiat wallet. So as you can see, my fiat wallet is empty now. But what that means is that I could sell any of the cryptocurrencies that I have for fiat, right? I could sell the Cardano and cash out and then use that fiat to top up my card and then go spend, right? Within a few minutes, I could sell the crypto, top the card up and go to the ATM and withdraw cash. Boom, right there and then and there. That is uh, so much faster than Coinbase, right? With Coinbase, if I want to cash out, I've got to withdraw my money, uh, tell it to cash out. It takes it three to five business days to show up in my bank account. In general, it shows up in 24 hours. But this is like, this is, to me, this is the fastest, easiest way to spend crypto, right? And I'm just spending it too. I'm not like cashing it out and putting it on the sidelines. It's just like... I need to spend some money. I want to spend some money. I got some crypto. Uh, so I'll, I'll just cash out a little bit. Why not? Right? So that's MCO Visa card. Really cool. And then they give you cash back and all this other stuff. Right? So I have a secondary camera today. And what I would like to do is uh, show you guys some stuff uh, on the ledger. Right, uh, we'll start with the Ledger S, right? So I have my little secondary camera here. Oh, I'm gonna have to turn off. Now, why is that? Huh, I don't know why that's on. Uh, oh, there was, a chroma key is on there, okay. It's not anymore. All right, so we took chroma key off. Isn't that cool? That's about as good as it gets. Right, that is like a clear shot of my Ledger Nano. Right, so when you first use your Ledger Nano S, you need to uh, enter your PIN to unlock it, and then you're free to do whatever you want to do. Right, uh, go into your apps and make purchases, store. But before you jump into all of that, you should go to your settings. Right, go to settings. Hit both buttons, go to your security, right? Use the buttons to navigate here. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Go into security, whoops. Hit both buttons and then here it is, auto lock. This used to drive me nuts because every 10 minutes, the ledger would ask me to uh, re-enter my pin and it's just frustrating as heck so go to auto lock hit both buttons and then just turn it off i think by default it's set to 10 minutes right you don't want that uh, unless you think someone's going to run up and grab your ledger 
while you're uh, spending crypto or whatever. But they're not, right? There's no reason to have the auto lock on in the privacy of your own home, right? So just turn that auto lock off so that you won't have to uh, keep re-entering your PIN. And, you know, when you're dealing with this device, it can be a little tricky and it could take you several minutes to do transactions. So disable that auto lock. Now, uh, boop, 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 boop. Here is the, uh, what am I doing here? Oh, I think I had it right the first time. All right, so here is the Ledger Nano X. Same deal, but with the Ledger Nano X, you can uh, hold both buttons down and go straight to this uh, main menu screen, right? Uh, you wanna go to settings, hit both buttons, and then that little arrow needs means there's more to that side, right? Just hit that little arrow, go to security, hit both buttons, go down to auto lock, do the same darn thing. Hit both buttons, and then, uh, you know, I think it'll be set to 10 minutes. You'll want to take that back to no auto lock, right? And then it'll be so much easier to deal with that thing, right? All right, let's go back to here. All right. Oh, I am going to uh, launch uh, Ledger Live. Now, the, what, the next thing I want to show you that will greatly uh, improve your user experience is uh, in Ledger Live. this out. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, no? Where is this thing? Is it just me? Hmm. Ah, okay. All right. I'm, I don't know what is going on with this thing. It's kind of weird. All right, but I guess it's where I want it to be. All right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. All right. So, uh, and this has been happening to me all week. I don't know what it's about, but it's pretty irritating. But it keeps telling me there's a sync error. But I've been able to use it just fine. It's just that I've got this irritating red message up there uh, telling me that I'm not syncing properly. So, oh, uh, it just told me that there was an update. Maybe the update will uh, solve that issue. All right, so I'm just going to run the update. And we'll run Ledger Live. Re-enter our password. All right. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Ledger Live, major. you can now manage up to 15 ERC-20 tokens directly in Ledger Live. Major tokens are included as ERC-20 tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Ledger Live will now display the tokens. Okay, so we knew about this uh, when we had the experimental features. Uh, ah, oh, it, it's just, it, it unselected them for me because they're no longer needed, right? Now, uh, by default, uh, Ledger Live supports ERC-20 tokens. So in the accounts interface here, you can look at it in different ways. You can look at it like that or in a list. Uh, you can see the tokens down there. These are my ERC-20 tokens that are stored in this Ethereum address. And then you can also hide them. Uh, before we go too far in, I wanted to show you that one little trick. Up there in the, on the gear shift, under settings, under general, See here where it says auto lock? So Ledger Live does the same irritating thing. It auto locks after 10 minutes. So you're sitting here uh, trying to figure out where to send your cryptocurrency and then you look over at your Ledger Live and it's waiting for you to enter your password again. Very irritating. 
And like I said, if you're in the privacy of your own home, there's no reason for it to auto lock. Uh, you know, when you're done with it, just tr quit, right? So uh, auto lock is set to 10 minutes by default in Ledger Live. So just turn that off, right? Just pull it down and uh, go down there to never. And then you don't have to deal with Ledger Live constantly logging you out every 10 minutes. So uh, I just wanted to uh, like touch on that really quickly because I know a lot of you uh, are, are playing around, experimenting with Ledger Live, and I know, and, and there's that stupid refresh thing is back again. <laughs> uh, it's nothing's perfect in this world, right? But those are a few little adjustments that you can make to greatly increase the convenience and usability of the Ledger devices and the Ledger Live software. All right. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I believe the uh, day is uh, September 12th that Binance will block access to U.S. users, All right? All right, so uh, I want to move some crypto around tonight, and uh, I've got quite a bit in my trust wallet. So uh, if you have been following the channel over the last few days, uh, if I can get it here, uh, I've done some uh, extra videos here. I did, I put up another Alexa video. Uh, I hope if you guys uh, have Alexa devices or Hue lights or, or just interested in maybe checking them out, uh, check out some of these uh, Alexa videos. Um, trying to figure out a way to get more views I don't know if it's keywords, descriptions, or uh, optimization, whatever I got to do. I'm trying to like get these out there so that uh, people will see them. Because it's not my usual crowd, right? It's usually the crypto people. Uh, so anyway, I did another Alexa video on backlighting the TV. And then I did a, a video on Trust Wallet. And then uh, I also did a video on sending cryptocurrency to your friends using crypto.com uh, because crypto.com has a send uh, feature that you can send crypto to your friends. Uh, now, it only it doesn't do BTC for some reason, but it will do like four or five different cryptocurrencies. Um, CRO being one of them, CRO chain. Uh, and then if you send CRO to someone who does not have a crypto.com account, uh, they will need to uh, register themselves for an account in order to receive it. So, uh, you know, you send $50 worth of crypto to somebody, I'm sure they won't mind taking a selfie and holding up their ID to get themselves registered. And not only that, when, when they open an account, crypto.com gives them 50 bucks. So uh, I sent 50 CRO to my wife, uh, and then I helped her get connected to uh, the crypto.com, get it installed and, you know, uh, registered. And now her balance is a hundred bucks, uh, a little more, because they gave her 50 just for opening the account and she received the 50 that I sent her. Now that was CRO, but all you got to do is trade it, right? I mean, you can trade it for Bitcoin in a, set, in a heartbeat, no biggie. And then if you want to, you can uh, cash it out and send it to your bank uh, right from your phone. Pretty cool. So, uh, but I did a, a video on Trust Wallet, and uh, so I would, I sort of put some crypto in my Trust Wallet that I would like to uh, move, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, what time is it? Oh, okay, all right. We're, all, we're fine, right? We got plenty of time. All right, so uh, now I'm going to reveal some personal information to you. Uh, you're going to see some of my balances. Uh, I, you know, i it makes me, some of, some of you are very uh, skittish about that. They would, uh, they don't want people to see anything on their balance or their crypto or anything. Uh, I've sort of committed myself to this channel and this live stream. So yes, you're going to see me moving crypto around and from one wallet to another. And you might go, oh, you know. 
you might say, wow, look at this guy moving all these worthless tokens around. Uh, <laughs> or you might. Uh, so uh, let's look at Trust Wallet. So Trust Wallet is up there in the corner. And at the moment, uh, Trust Wallet, as uh, it's going to update its uh, total balance here in a sec, I think, maybe, or it already did. Okay, so there's $536 worth of cryptocurrency in there, right? So the first thing that I want to do is I want to move that polymath out. And I'd like to move that polymath into my Ethereum wallet that is uh, based on my Ledger Nano X, right? So uh, I will demonstrate how to do that. Uh, it's pretty easy now that Ledger Live supports ERC-20 tokens. It would have been just as easy to do it in uh, Ledger Live to the Ethereum address because all you have to do to send an ERC-20 token uh, is to send it to an Ethereum address. So that would have been just as easy to do. So, but let's go ahead and do it. And what's cool about uh, the Trust Wallet is we'll be able to scan the, the destination address. So, uh, and that'll be cool. Now, uh, it is an ERC base 20 wallet, among other, it's, it's a lot of things, but it does work like an ERC or an Ethereum based wallet in that if I send that polymath, I'm gonna need some gas, right? I'm gonna need a little bit of Ethereum. So you'll notice down there, a third down, that there is some Ethereum in the wallet that will pay for my gas. So when I send, I can send all of that poly and it won't take anything away with a network fee. The network fees will be taken completely, uh, paid out uh, by the Ethereum. So we'll, we'll notice that the Ethereum will go down just slightly. All right, so let's go over here. Uh, let's scroll down to accounts, right? And there's my Ethereum wallet. And let's see our tokens. All right, so there's some polymath in here already. Let's go to the polymath, and there it is. It shows me my poly, it shows me my balance, and I wanna do a receive, right? And, I, and it's already uh, uh, selected the polymath network for me. I'm going to disconnect my S. I'm going to get out of this, okay. And uh, let's follow this through. So we hit continue. And it wants me to connect my Ledger device and open the Ethereum app. So let's check it out. There's uh, my home screen. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna hit the button until I'm on top of the Ethereum app. Right now that I'm on top, I'm gonna hit both buttons with my finger, both fingers. Press both buttons, right? Now it says application ready. And if you'll notice on the screen, the both uh, items are now checked, right? So this is one of the most confusing things about the way the ledger works. You need to be, you need to mind the two devices. You've got some, there's something going on in your device and there's something going on on your screen and they feed into each other, right? It's actually not that difficult, right? If you just read what the screen is telling you, it tells you exactly what to do with the device, all right? So I followed the instructions on the, on the screen and entered the Ethereum app on my device. I'm done with, I don't need to do anything, I don't need to press any more buttons. I'm in the Ethereum app, it's telling me it's ready to continue, right? And then also, notice down there, it says open the Ethereum app to manage your Polymath network tokens. It's kind of explaining that uh, ERC-20 tokens are managed with an Ethereum address in case the user might be wondering why there was no Polymath app, All right? All right, now it wants me to verify the address. So I'm gonna hit continue and then we'll go over here and it wants me to uh, advance to the next screen. There's the address. That's the Ethereum address. And then I can look on my screen and, and make sure it's the same one. 
And then the next screen is approve. I hit both buttons, right? And then uh, you'll notice that the, the, the X became active, so I can close this, but I'm not going to. Uh, I don't even need to copy this because we're gonna use the, uh, the trust wallet. So now I'm on the trust wallet over here on the side. Uh, you can see I'm holding my phone here. Let's go to Polymath and let's do a send. And uh, instead of pasting the address, I'm gonna tap that little icon way over to the right and it's gonna launch the camera. I'm gonna trust the, let the camera, right? And then uh, I'm going to raise the camera up to that uh, QR code. That is the address I'm sending this polymath to. Boom, all right? So it auto-filled the address for me. And I can look on my phone and I can look on my Ledger Live and I can verify that those, that is the address. Now, I'm just gonna max it out. I know, I know we were talking earlier about sending small amounts. I've done this before. So I'm just gonna max it out and hit next, all right? And then it gives me all the details of this and it's gonna charge me nine cents out of my Ethereum balance, right? It's not gonna take anything away from the polymath. It's gonna charge me out of my Ethereum balance. That's why I need to have Ethereum in this wallet when I send ERC20 tokens. Otherwise, there would say not enough gas. All right, so I'm gonna hit send and then uh, it's just pending. <laughs> It'll take it a minute. Uh, and pretty soon uh, my balance should say zero poly. Mm -hmm. I hope I got that. I thought I did it right. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on that and we can close this and wait for that poly to come in. I don't know why it says z pending zero poly. Did I not send it all? Oh, there it goes. Okay. So I just, I uh, pull, oh boy, and there it goes over on the ledger. So now uh, you could see how quick that went, right? So uh, I sent that poly from my trust wallet on my phone onto uh, my uh, ledger Nano X. And now it's safely stored uh, on the Ethereum blockchain and the, the private key of that blockchain address is safely stored on my device, right? So that's the key. Now, a lot of people uh, bash Ledger Nano uh, and Ledger Nano X, Ledger Nano S, because uh, the Ledger Live does not support all the cryptocurrencies that it claims it, it is compatible with, right? Like ADA. So they get mad and they go, why isn't ADA, why isn't uh, Ledger Live in ADA? Or why isn't ADA in Ledger Live? Well, it's not because for whatever reason, it needs a third party wallet interface, right? But the key here is that the private keys are being stored on this device. I mean, that's, you know, that's the main reason why we use this device. Sure, it may not be pretty to access our ADA, but uh, why, why worry um, uh, about that uh, when all it takes is a little third-party uh, wallet to view your balance, right? And speaking of ADA, why don't we move some ADA? Let's do that. All right, so uh, I have some ADA on uh, crypto.com. And so what I need to do uh, is, uh, first of all, I don't need Ledger Live for this because Ledger Live does not support ADA, right? Uh, so let's go over to, uh, first we'll go to the ADA app. All right, I am in the Ethereum app at the moment. I need to get out of it, right? So I'm just gonna hit the button and navigate over to quit. Now I'm gonna hit both buttons, which takes me back to the home screen. Sorry about the focus there. Now I'm going to navigate over to Cardano, right? I have the Cardano app on the device. I can't view Cardano in Ledger Live, but I can store my private key on this device. So I'm gonna hit both buttons here. Now it's waiting, 
right? It's waiting for me. It's waiting for me to launch some software. So uh, let's go over to Ada Light. This is a website. The Ada is not stored on the website. Don't get confused. The Ada is stored on the Ada blockchain. The private key is stored on the ledger. The website is simply an interface to your wallet, right? So I'm just gonna hit continue and I'm going to access my Cardano wallet using my Ledger Nano S, my hardware, right? I'll choose the Ledger option. Now, uh, it's asking me to do something here now, right? It says export public key. It wants me to hit both buttons. It's a little confusing. It does, the uh, menu commands on Ada uh, Lite are a little confusing, right? Export public key, hit both buttons. Boom. Now it says confirm export public key. Yes, again. Now I could go over here and reject it, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit both buttons and hit confirm export public key. Now it says waiting for commands. And now uh, the ADA balance is, uh, I see my ADA balance in this interface, right? That is the ADA that I have, uh, that the private key for that address is stored here. I know it would be so much simpler if it was just in here, but it's not in here. The private key is in here. The ADA itself, if you even want to call it that, is on the ADA blockchain, right? It's the digital ledger that is, uh, there's a copy of it on thousands of machines all across the world. And every time a new block is formed, all of the transactions get updated on all of the nodes, right? That's where your ADA is. But Control of your ADA address is through your private key, which is stored here. Now, I told you I had some ADA in uh, oh, crypto.com, right? So let's go to crypto.com. Now, I need to uh, withdraw this ADA, or it's Cardano. I need to withdraw this uh, Cardano to this wallet. So what I need to do is get that address into my phone, right? Because I'm not going to sit here and try to type in an ADA address into my phone. It's like the ADA addresses are very long, right? I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to copy the address and then I'm going to just email it to myself. Easy peasy. Right? And then I'll check my email on my phone. Right, there's the ADA address. We'll send it. All right, we'll go back to ADA Lite. And I'll show you my phone again. So I'm gonna go, there it came into my phone. So I'm just gonna check the email on that phone. And then I'm going to double click there. I'm going to select that ADA address. I'm gonna copy it. And hopefully this will work, right? We had a little issue with crypto.com last week or the week before. Now let's go to wallet. I'm in wallet. I'm going to hit Cardano and I'm going to send it. Uh, I could send it to my wife. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. ADA withdrawals are not yet available. In the meantime, you may exchange your ADA to another currency with withdrawals. Uh, MCO. Okay. All right. Well, I thought we were going to withdraw some ADA from my crypto.com account, but apparently uh, they don't have support for that yet. So uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and hold on to my ADA uh, in uh, on this platform. Um, I would like to store it in uh, my own wallet, but uh, I'm not really ready to liquidate it right now. And uh, crypto.com is a pretty secure platform, so uh, we're just gonna. But things, uh, you know how it is. Now, let's see, though. Um, there is something that I can, you know what? I'm not going to withdraw anything from here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of keep things here uh, for now. Um, but we will work with Trust Wallet. So what else can we withdraw from Trust Wallet? Well, um, I've got some uh, BAT there. Um Let's get that. Let's get that Bitcoin out, right? Let's do a Bitcoin uh, 
transaction, right? Now, Bitcoin is supported in Ledger Live, right? We don't need to worry anything about uh, Bitcoin, right? Everyone loves and supports Bitcoin. <laughs> All right. Oh, and we'll be able to use that cool uh, scan feature in Trust Wallet. All right, so uh, here's my Bitcoin account, my native SegWit. I want to do a receive. Let me get this other stuff out of the way. So it's, it's not there. Okay, so I want to do a receive of Bitcoin into this account. I'll hit continue. Now, there it is. It's asking me to do something on my device. So, let's oblige it, right? Let's go over to the device. Ooh, what was that? That was weird. All right, so I remember I was in the Ada app, so I need to get out, right? I'm going to hit this button because the little button there is pointing to this button. I'm going to go uh, keep going until I get to quit. <laughs> ah, ah. This is a little funky wallet. Mm. Wait, wait. Sorry, guys. I can do this. There. <laughs> it uh, It's a little weird. The Ada app is uh, a little funky uh, when you're trying to navigate. I don't know what it is, but I just kept trying, right? <laughs> and now I got it, right? So now I need to just navigate over to Bitcoin. Right, just use the buttons till I get to doggone it. I'm sorry about this focus issue. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, Bitcoin. Right now, I'm going to hit both buttons. All right, and now that I did that, uh, the application is now happy. And see the little check mark there on open Bitcoin app on your device? It's happy. I don't need to do anything else with this. I'm done. Right, Bitcoin uh, app is now open and I'm ready to deal with some Bitcoin. So I'm gonna hit continue, and then it says to verify on the device, and I'll hit continue again. Now it wants me to look at my device again, right? So let's look over here. All right, there's the address, the Bitcoin address that I'm going to be sending to. That's the address, the public address of the Bitcoin on this device, right? I'm gonna hit both buttons to approve it, Boom. We'll go back over here. And there's that Bitcoin address. Now I want to send that Bitcoin into this uh, ledger-based wallet. So there's that QR code. So let's hit the Bitcoin on the phone, right? We're back on the phone now. Uh, let's hit Bitcoin. Let's do a send. And then I've got that interface again. I can hit over there on the right. I'm going to open up the camera. I'm going to, you know... The camera is ready to go. I'm going to raise it up to that QR code. Boom. It scanned in the uh, Bitcoin address. And notice that's a BC1 address. That's a, a Bitcoin, what they call a uh, native SegWit. So hopefully Trust Wallet will support it. <laughs> I'm going to max it out again. I'm throwing all caution to the wind. I'm hitting next. All right. It wants me to confirm that. And now it's pending. Uh, let's get this out of the way. Let's uh, do that. Should just, in just a minute or two, the Bitcoin should just, it should go to zero, right? It might take it a minute, right? All right. All right, I've been ignoring you guys all night. Scott's been hanging out all night. That makes me feel good. Scott, how were those pies last week? You said the pies were almost ready. Uh, I'm just trying to imagine the most uh, popular pie in Hawaii. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to sound condescending, but the first one that pops to mind is pineapple pie. But uh, I don't think that's... Uh, there aren't that many, uh, you don't hear of pineapple pie. What you do hear of is pineapple upside down cake. But I'm sure you're probably sick of pineapples, right? So well, I'm assuming, uh, what was it, uh, apple pie, maybe.
<laughs> uh, actually, uh, well, I'm not sure if uh, Binance uh, US will support ADA. I thought they were. Uh, oh, uh, Bitcoin is gone. Bitcoin is zero. And uh, looks like the Bitcoin came in today, September 6th. And so we successfully transferred our Bitcoin uh, from out of that trust wallet. All right. And then uh, just for laughs, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, bat. Right. There's just a little bit of bat in here. So we'll do a receive, receive. Let's uh, go over to uh, the device. All right, we need to exit the Bitcoin app. Quit. We need to uh, go back. Whoops, we need to go back over to the Ethereum app. All right, it's happy. We're gonna confirm on the device. All right, the device uh, has got a little arrow. It wants me to do this. There's that address that it's confirming, and then I'm gonna approve it. And now it's ready. It's ready for me to take some action, right? So let's go back over to our phone. Let's do a basic attention token. Let's do send. Uh, let's hit that little camera icon. Let's, there we go. Uh, let's max it out. Let's next it and send and boom, we're done. All right. Now, uh, there were some, uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and show you, well, let me look and see if there's any questions first before that, because there was one other thing I was going to do. Hey, William, how are you? Uh, okay. Let me just see if there was any outstanding questions that I may have missed. Yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, we're, we're kind of going back and forth. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, you'll be able to withdraw your coins after the 12th if you have something on Binance. But like I said, if you have like uh, you know, a bunch of little piddly ERC-20 tokens that aren't worth anything or that are worth something uh, that aren't uh, going to be supported on the new Binance, then you should either liquidate them or find another cryptocurrency exchange that you can store them on or trade them on, right? So uh, since, uh, let's just do Binance US Coins. Uh, 30 tokens. Now let's see if uh, I'll move this out of the way. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so uh, you can buy ADA on Binance US. So I think Mr. David was worried he wouldn't be able to buy ADA anymore. But Binance US will have ADA. BTC, uh, Raven, Waves, Atom, Dash, IOTA, Nano, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and uh, BNB, of course, yeah, Ethereum. Uh, and if they're if they have Ethereum, uh, I'm not sure why they wouldn't support other ERC20 tokens. But they may not. They may, since you know a lot of ERC tokens are kind of shaky, right? So uh, may may not be regulatory. Uh, you know, have all the required regulatory requirements or whatever the hell they need, right? So, but there it is, right? There's your basket of coins. So if you got any of these coins on Binance right now, you I, you don't really have anything to worry about unless you just want to be hyper vigilant and just get them off Binance before the 12th, right? I don't have anything really on Binance right now, so uh, it's easy for me to talk, right? I don't have like my retirement fund stored on Binance right now. Uh, so uh, I'm, it's easy for me to be flippant. So uh, do what's best and most comfortable for you. We know that you will not be able to trade or deposit after the 12th. That is a, uh, you know, that's a given fact. Uh, I heard that you would still be able to withdraw, but I could be wrong. But uh, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that would just be a, a public relations nightmare if they cut 
U.S. customers off uh, up from withdrawals. I mean, just think about it. They're the largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Uh, they're just like getting regulatory approval for their stablecoin uh, in New York. They're donating to uh, their uh, hurricane relief. They're uh, uh, investing in uh, pure technology. Why on earth would they cut off every U.S. customer from their hard-earned cryptocurrency? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, right? So, but they will no longer allow you to trade anymore. They're doing that for, you know, to be in compliance. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, I can't send my ADA anywhere. Uh, the crypto.com will not allow me to withdraw it at all. I would have to liquidate it. And then uh, if I wanted to, I could liquidate it, uh, transfer that, uh, the Bitcoin somewhere else, and quickly buy some ADA and then move it. You know, I could quickly buy, I could transfer uh, my Bitcoin to Binance, buy some ADA, and then transfer it uh, to my ADA Lite. Uh, I would lose a little bit in transactions fees and network fees, but I could do that. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ride it out. I'm just gonna let my uh, ADA just live on crypto.com for a little while. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, I wondered, uh, did crypto, or I'm sorry, did Scott Lee tell us what kind of pie he was cooking last time? <laughs> did he ever say what kind of pie he was cooking? I'm so disappointed, Scott. You can, you can tell us later, I guess. I still, I have to tell Scott, thank you so much. He is such an inspiration to me uh, because he's always rooting for me. Every time I post a video, Scott makes a comment. I mean, within hours. And, you know, I just, it's such a comfort to have him comment on every single video I post. Whether he likes it or not, you know, he'll just... He'll say, well, that's not my thing. I, I don't remember the last time. Uh, I think he said, one, he goes, I'm not holding any Tron. I did, I did like a Tron wallet. And so his comment was, not holding any Tron, you know. But so cool that he, he comments on every. He even commented on the Alexa video that I posted today. So once again, my heart goes out to you, Scott. Thank you so much. And uh, if I'm ever in Hawaii, I'll stop by for pie for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So uh, the stars. <laughs> uh, let me log into Binance real quick for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna. This is the new Binance. All right. So when we log into Binance, and I need to put in my master password here. And it probably, oh, it took. Wow. I even had to backspace during it. Okay, so we log into Binance proper. And this is their new interface, right? So uh, we'll just go over to our Google Authenticator. Oops. All right, up at the top there. We'll let it uh, transition. Okay, 485147. All right, and then when we go to wallet, uh, what what you're seeing is this, and you're like, what the, mm, where's my balances, what's going on, have I been locked out, no. See, up here where it says estimated value, there's a little eyeball here, I just click on it, and it reveals your balance. That's all you got to do. I don't know why they do that, maybe they figure somebody's at work, checking their balance and they don't want other people looking over their shoulder uh, but you, there's not much information available to you if you can't see any of your balances so it's not very useful so but that's all you got to do you just click that little eyeball and it'll reveal your balances for you r star three 
crypto time. New Binance. What do I mean new Binance? Okay, so uh, a few months ago, Binance revamped their website so that it looks completely different than it used to. If you scroll up to the top, if you can see up here, this is their old website. Yes, the old website. This is the old Binance and your old balances. All right. <laughs> It's just, and then, so now uh, they, they have a new Binance. If you click on the Binance thing, uh, I don't think it'll, oh. Huh. I want a sneak peek at the new Binance.com. I don't know, I guess, uh, and it, it just depends on your link. Uh, I don't know what the, the one for the old one was, but it's just a redesigned interface. The same accounts, the same trades, everything is the same. Your trading history, your account balances, everything is there. It's just, it looks different and the interface is different. I guess improved, right? That's, this is the new Binance. But uh, we, it won't be around for long, right? I mean, we'll still be able to go on here and withdraw. Let's, let's make that clear. Uh, but we won't be able to. So what'll happen is you'll log into Binance and all these will be uh, dim, right? Or they'll they'll say something like like there see dim it's there there are no deposits allowed deposit delisted but all of the coins will say will be dim right there won't be any deposits and then all the trades will be dim right for U.S. customers right I don't see any here that that don't allow trades right now uh, but you can see here these are disabled. Right. So that's what's going to happen on the 12th or the 13th. You're going to log in. You'll be able to get in. Everything will be fine. But all your deposit and trade will all be dim. And the only thing you'll have is withdraw. Right. Now, there are plenty of cryptocurrency exchanges where you can store coins that you've bought on Binance. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Though. There, there may be a few coins that only that, that uh, Binance supports. But usually, if it's on Binance, it's usually on Bittrex and Gemini and a couple, you know, the other big ones, too. So, a lot of good stuff happening in crypto. I always use the old one, yeah. <laughs> uh, is Bitcoin the best crypto to hold long-term as an investor? Seems like much more risk holding any of the other coins. Uh, very good question. I think the consensus... Now, uh, with mainstream commentators, and mind you, mainstream commentators uh, don't really know that much. I mean, it depends on who they are, right? But a lot of mainstream commentators don't really know anything about cryptocurrencies. Uh, but they've heard of Bitcoin, right? So uh, they're going to they're gonna be more prone to say Bitcoin is king. Nobody cares about all coins. They're all going to be gone. You know, they're all going to zero. So Bitcoin is the only real cryptocurrency out there. But, you know, they were saying that about Bitcoin a couple years back. Bitcoin is rat poison. Bitcoin is has no intrinsic value. Bitcoin is nothing. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's changed their tune and they're talking up Bitcoin like it's something cool. But all coins can, you know, uh, are nothing, right? But they really, I don't think they really get it. But they're starting to convince people in the crypto industry and investors, right? So I don't know. Uh, people like us that believe in cryptocurrency have probably been holding most of this time and just watching the value of their coins go to zero. And all these people that are jumping in and out of the market that are buying and selling these uh, altcoins are uh, just, they're taking a beating, the altcoins. So, you know, you saw me playing around with ADA. Uh, somebody asked me about ADA the other day, uh, and I was like, well, you know, uh, price-wise, it's uh, in the toilet, but uh, technology-wise, there's a lot of good stuff going on with ADA. You know, you've got to learn to separate the underlying technology from the day-to-day -day price. And, uh, you know, they call me crazy. Right. You may say, well, you know, you have to be an idiot to invest in altcoins right now. The charts say, 
you know, lower, lower highs and lower lows or whatever all these technical analysis people tell you about how the markets work and how trading works. They'll, they're going to bash altcoins. So, but it has been the case over the last year, it seems, that Bitcoin has uh, sort of uh, taken on a life of its own, right? And we always talked about this. We always wished that all the coins wouldn't always move together, right? In the old, back in the 2017, 2018, uh, the whole market would dive when Bitcoin went down. You know, and then when Bitcoin went up, the whole market would go up and then they would always just flow together. Well, I was always waiting for that decoupling, but careful what you pray for, right? <laughs> the altcoins have managed to decouple from Bitcoin. But let's say uh, Bitcoin finally does uh, start to gain in price and in overall acceptance and adoption. Uh, the altcoins can't be too far behind. Because uh, every coin has a, a, a niche, a purpose, right? Bitcoin does what it does. But there are other coins out there that do different things. And they're based on the same technology. And some of them may be good ideas. Some of them may be bad ideas. Some of them that are bad ideas might get high prices because of hype. Some of them that are really, really good ideas might be in the gutter as far as price goes. But it's just a matter of what you feel uh, is important, right? So someone kind of bashed me the other day because he goes, well, you know, should I buy, uh, you know, what do you think about altcoins? And I was kind of like, well, they're really low right now, maybe cheap, maybe buy some there. And he goes, oh, you must be crazy. <laughs> so anyway, all right, guys, uh, who knows? Yeah, who knows when altcoins will pay off? But I do know that they are dirt cheap. So uh, enough said, right? It's up to you. Uh, but I also believe that if there, there's this thing that says try to own one Bitcoin, right? And uh, now that may be impossible for many of us, right? So the next best thing right below own one Bitcoin is try to own as much Bitcoin as possible. So yes... If you want to try to speculate in altcoins and, you know, try to catch one that's going to shoot to the moon and make you a overnight millionaire, uh, so be it. Uh, good for you. But at the same time, in parallel to that, try to acquire Bitcoin along the way. Right. That's what I've done. I try to acquire Bitcoin because Bitcoin is here to stay. Now, there may be some huge calamity where. You know, they crack the encryption with uh, 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 there, there's a new technology coming out, quantum computers or whatever. There may be some major catastrophe. Who knows? There may be a major catastrophe that causes the dollar to plunge. We don't know what the future will hold. But we do know at the moment that uh, the, the uh, cryptography, uh, principles of cryptography that are built into Bitcoin and the blockchain technology are solid, right? This is like egghead college level stuff, right? If you've ever tried to wrap your mind around Bitcoin. This is the kind of encryption that the NSA, this is, this is, the, this is the kind of encryption that pisses the NSA off. And if you're pissing the NSA off, then you know you've got good encryption, right? That's their job. The NSA's job is to break everybody's codes. Right. And so if the NSA is pissed off at Bitcoin, you know, they got something good. So even the NSA with their mega computing uh, to try to crack this kind of encryption, like to try to uh, guess a private key uh, with brute force attack is I mean, we're on the order of millions of years. I mean, that's no slouch. We're not talking, oh, it's going to take me five days to crack this code. We're talking millions of years for them to, to brute force crack a 256-bit private key. I mean, it's just unfathomable, the cryptography and technology that goes into Bitcoin and blockchain. It's flabbergasting. All right. So, uh, and it's the wave of the future, right? 
So try to accumulate as much as you can uh, while you can. Don't sell your house. Uh, don't spend your rent money. Um, don't, uh, you know, uh, go on an all rice diet just so you can, you know, buy Bitcoin. Buy what you can afford. But uh, why not, right? I consider it savings. Now, some other people might think I'm crazy and they'll want to save their money somewhere in the bank, right? But uh, I prefer to hold, uh, put my, my uh, disposable savings into uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. That's just me. Ah, uh, okay. Um, okay, there were some Binance coins that I wanted to do. And will I do that? Yeah, why not? All right. So um, they're worth. They're not worth that much right now. All right. So I'm going to go over to the dreaded uh, Binance Dex, the Binance decentralized exchange. This is not their uh, cryptocurrency exchange. They're centralized. This is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange based on the BNB coin. And I'm going to access my wallet. Whoops, nope, sorry. That's not what I wanna do. Uh, sorry, not what I wanna do. I'm going to uh, unlock this wallet, right? So how am I gonna do that? Uh, we'll use ledger device, all right? Now, it's doing the same thing. It's telling me exactly what I need to do. It says, enter your PIN and open Binance Chain on your device. So let's do that. All right, I'm in, I uh, forget what app I was in, Ethereum. So I'm going to exit Ethereum by navigating over to quit, hitting both buttons. Now I'm back at the home screen, All right? So now I'm going to navigate over to Binance Coin. You see how many apps you can hold on the Ledger Nano X? Highly recommended over the S. The S is so frustrating. It only holds like three or four apps. This one will hold like 10, 15, 20, whatever. All right, I'm on Binance Chain. Let's hit both buttons. Let's go back here. All right, now I'm gonna hit connect to Ledger. All right, and then it's gonna, it's similar to uh, my Ether wallet, right? It's giving me some Binance coin addresses. I'm going to tick that first one where I have a balance. I'm gonna hit confirm. All right, and now it's gonna tell me that on September 12th, it's gonna cut me off, right? This is a whole different thing, right? But I'm just, I just wanna show you how the Binance uh, DEX works, right? So I'm gonna hit, I understand. Now it wants me to confirm this security thing, right? So uh, there, I'm gonna hit uh, this button and I'm gonna prove that, right? And here we are on the Binance Dex, right? Now I wanna to go to my balances. I'll go to balances over here. Now it wants me to confirm again on the device. Same, same deal, it shows me the address. It's just exporting the public address. I'll hit approve, right? And there we go. These are the coins that are actually being stored here. Uh, the private key for all of these coins are on this device. The Binance token works like Ethereum. Uh, it is the main token, and then all of the other tokens uh, are sub-tokens of the Binance coin, right? So I want to move some coins from my uh, trust wallet onto this DEX, right? I'm gonna move them from my phone to my ledger, right? My ledger is holding the private key of this wallet. So uh, let's go to trust. All right, let's go back here. Now, what I wanna do is, uh, you see the Mithril and the Now token? I, uh, I have some extra on here. What I like to do is keep an even uh, 10 multiple uh, so that I can kind of keep an eye on the price action. Makes it easier for me. 
So what I like to do is keep a thousand mithril in this wallet, on this phone wallet, so that I can just kind of check the current price of mithril. So I'm going to move uh, a, a 1,210 over to the DEX, right? So I'm going to go over here to the DEX and hover. And that is the Binance coin address of my wallet, the wallet that private key is on my ledger, right? So now I'm over on the phone. I'm going to go to Mithril. So it's 1210, right? We're going to send 1210. All right. I'm going to uh, hit the little icon for the camera, right? And then I'm going to scan that barcode. And that's the BNB address, right? And let's do 1210 Mithril. It's not a whole lot. It's like $21 worth. And then I'm going to hit Done. And then I'm going to hit next. And then I'm going to confirm that. And there. See, now I've got a thousand mithril uh, even, right? And what that does for me is I can look at the price of mithril. It tells me it's 0 0.1. See, see how it says that mithril is a penny right now? But if I look at... Uh, if I look over under my balance, it gives me the value of my uh, 1,000 mithril. I can see that it's really uh, 1.7 pennies, right? It's closer to 2 pennies than it is to 1 penny. And that's what is revealed to me when I keep a 1,000 in this wallet. I can see the current price easier. All right, so I'm going to do the same with the now token. I'm going to move 1140 of the now token over. So I'm going to hover again, and then I'm going to hit now. I'm going to hit send, and it was 1140, right? Uh, let's hit that little uh, icon. Let's scan that barcode for the BNB address. Let's hit 1140, right? And then I'll hit done. Then I'll hit next. I'll confirm that. And now I'm left with a thousand now, which is the way I like it. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't know if there's anything else at the moment that I'm that. Oh, uh, see how I've got zero poly. I can just slide it to the side and hit disable. I really don't need to see it. Uh, and if I need it again, I can always re-add it if I put something in there again. Right. And I don't even need Bitcoin anymore. I don't need to see it. It's... I know it supports Bitcoin. I could use the wallet to sort of look at the current price of Bitcoin, but I'll just slide it to the side and disable it. It'll reappear if I send some Bitcoin there. All right. So now the Binance coin. This one's a little tricky. I want to get the Binance coin down to one if I can. So uh, one point. I gotta write it down. I don't have anything to write it down. Uh, Twenty-six forty-five. Uh, it's always going to screw me. It's always going to like leave me with 99. And so, uh, so I'm going to put, let's see. Um, let's try two. See if that leaves me with an even amount. Oh, I still, <laughs> I still got 0.999. It's okay. Uh, it gives me a pretty good idea of the current price of Binance coin. All right, so Binance is currently at like 22.42, roughly, because I don't quite have one Binance coin in there. All right, so we cleaned out this wallet to a certain extent. There's still some Ethereum in there, maybe a little more Ethereum than I really like to hold in this wallet. Um... I like to keep a little bit in there uh, for my ERC-20 tokens, but I've moved them out, right? I've emptied all my ERC-20 tokens out now. I put them in my ledger, so I really don't need the Ether there for gas anymore. So I'll just uh, transfer that into Ledger Live too. So uh, we're right here. Uh, let's go to Ethereum. Let's do Receive. Let's hit Continue. Uh, let's follow the instructions. 
right? I need to exit Binance Chain by navigating over to Quit. Uh, and then I need to go back to Ethereum. All right. All right, it's happy. Let me get this out of the way for the second. And this too. Uh, let's hit continue. Verify on device. Oops. All right. There's the address, the Ethereum address. Let's approve that. Let's go back over here. There's the Ethereum address. Let's take a look at our phone app. All right, we're in the phone app. Let's do uh, Ethereum. Let's do send. Let's hit that icon there for the uh, camera. Let's scan that QR code. And let's max out that Ethereum and send it over to our ledger. Let's hit send. And then uh, we'll clear that out. Uh, it's fine if you want to use the trust wallet to carry around a lot of cryptocurrency. Uh, there's no problem with that. It's perfectly capable of, uh, you know, being a go-to type of wallet. You know, you might even be able to find someone that might accept the cryptocurrency, uh, another trust wallet user, and you guys can just beam crypto between each other. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a versatile, usable, real-world wallet for your cryptocurrency. But you might also, uh, for your, your main stash, want to keep your crypto somewhere more secure, like uh, a desktop-based wallet or uh, the ledger-based wallet, the cold wallet, paper wallet, anything like that. But for like working crypto, the, the trust wallet is awesome. Right? It's a non-custodial wallet. It, the private keys are encrypted on your phone. When you create the wallet, you write down a backup phrase. If the phone is lost, stolen, or damaged, you can always recover that crypto with your recovery phrase to a different phone, right? So, uh, and an attacker won't be able to, to access the crypto on the phone either because he doesn't have your passcode, right? So uh, it's safe on there. But some people are a little skittish about carrying around their crypto on their phone. I'm not. I think it's kind of cool. All right, let's see here. Uh, we just got that Ethereum down here. Not quite yet. That Ethereum should come in pretty soon. Let me do this. Um, let me close this. Let me go here. Let me go here. Oh, it always shows the tokens down there. Interesting. I don't know if there's a way to turn that behavior off in this interface. There it is. It just came in. 0.6 uh, Ethereum. So that, that raises my balance up to 3.2. So... Uh, so you've watched me consolidate my crypto from one place to another. Uh, I had moved that crypto around because I was doing a video on Trust Wallet, and I wanted to show in the video how you uh, fund Trust Wallet. So, uh, you know, I know most of you buy your cryptocurrency on an exchange and generally leave it there. Uh, or you, uh, you know, you put it in your own wallet maybe once after you buy it. Uh, but uh, it's always good to you know, get a feel for how cryptocurrency works, how you move it around, how to push it from one place to another. Uh, it's just an amazing technology the way it works. Uh, yeah, uh, if you've got some Binance uh, a BNB token, uh, you can store it in Trust Wallet, right? Now, I've been meaning to contact trust people and ask them if, uh, well, uh, the wallet is the wallet, right? It's like I said, you own the private key. So if you store BNB coin on trust wallet, uh, it's yours, right? So yeah, it's a good place to store. Now it has a DEX too, uh, built in the wallet, the, the, the phone based wallet down there. You can't really see it. I'm covering it up. 
But there is, whoops. There's a dex down there at the bottom where you can actually trade cryptocurrencies. That might not work after September 12th. I'm not too sure how that's going to pan out. But definitely, you're, you're more than welcome to hold BNB coin. You could see at the time when we first started this, I only I had a couple of BNB coin in there. You could put 100 in there, 300, 400, and it's perfectly safe in there. Uh, so yeah, that'd be a good place to offload it. Uh, you know, if you've got a bunch of it on the Binance exchange and you, you know, you want to hold on to it, you want to feel like you own it, put it in your own wallet. And this is a good, a good wallet. This uh, trust wallet is owned by Binance. It's Binance owned and approved. So it works very well with Binance. And you'll, you saw how quickly those uh, Binance transactions went through. Are there any cryptos that you can't store on Trust Wallet? Well, that's a difficult question, but check it out how many it does support. Let's talk about that, right? So there's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Dash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic. Whoops. <laughs> Siri, Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Zcash, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, Ravencoin, Tron, Theta, Binance, BNB, Binance, VE Chain, Callisto, uh, Ontology, Tezos, Zelle. Uh, I mean, just a lot that you can store in this wallet. Uh, of course, all the ERC20 tokens can be stored in here, and all of the BEP2 tokens can be stored in here. And then you'll notice that there's, uh, let me see if I can find one. Uh, they it, it, will, it will store Tron, TRC20, TRC10 tokens, right? So um, why don't we try that? Oh, we're running out of time. I got to go. I'll do it next time. I'll put some Tron in this wallet, and then we can uh, try uh, sending some uh, sub-Tron tokens, like TWX or something like that. Uh, but this wallet stores a lot of cryptocurrencies. It's really a versatile wallet. Now, I know it doesn't store every cryptocurrency. It doesn't store ADA, <laughs> right? Everybody's worried about, hey, where are we going to put our worthless ADA? Uh, but, yeah, uh, Daedalus, uh, Adalite, the, here, uh, can't withdraw from crypto.com, but you can buy it. <laughs> Just found that out tonight. But anyway, uh, thanks, everybody. I hope you guys have uh, a great night. Uh, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate everyone here. Um, I'll do some of the, I'll try to do some videos on some other wallets. Chadwick, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll check out BitPay wallet and see how that goes. Uh, don't forget, I have a live stream every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me again next week for live from Michigan uh, or the youper duper live stream right because we're all youpers now that we live in michigan actually uh youper is from the up the upper peninsula so uh but we can all be youpers if we want to all right so please be uh please join me next week if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you'd like to subscribe to my channel i would appreciate it when you subscribe there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.